So I'll talk about uh, the history of our uh, software development, which was uh, uh, quite quite a challenge for me because I never thought about uh, yeah, writing that down or just uh, reporting about that, but it, it was interesting anyway. So I will uh, keep it brief as possible. So just to introduce where we are, we are um, an engineering university in Germany, one of the bigger ones, and we have two chairs in our institute, one dealing with technical uh, components, which is basically me, and my colleague is dealing with uh, hearing research and medical applications. So um, my, my research focus was always since 20 years uh, simulation and not stopping at the simulation result was uh, showing some data in the, on, on slides or plots, but uh, putting that on, on headphones. So we added then the component of oralization for all these simulation results, which combines in a logical way simulation and oralization techniques as concerns computation with uh, di digital signal processing uh, filter programming and connecting to hardware, which we can in, then use for, for playing sounds to people. And we have a good environment in our university because we have, um, um, uh, my department is electrical engineering and information technology. So the students are, uh, are very interesting in, in our work. So there are some, some examples. Uh, we combine, as I said, electrical engineering, but also our um, colleagues in computer science cooperate very nicely with us. So we uh, deal with aircraft noise, for example, or subway station, uh, sound propagation, uh, urban environments uh, coming more in future even. And uh, also the classical room acoustic thing applied in this example on a historic church. And here you see also our uh, hardware, which we are running in our university, which is a cave, which is a five-sided uh, immersive environment where we are responsible for the sound, but the colleagues in computer science deal with the vision. So we come from the 90s. Uh, I myself, I, I made the first version of the software actually in, in 1988, uh, uh, 89. So we came from classical room acoustics, predicting concert hall acoustics. Then today we extend that to uh, communication problems uh, in classrooms, for example, not just concert halls and uh, also using that in listening tests in psychoacoustic experiments where we can do more than just comparing sounds via headphones. So putting people in an immersive environment is, uh, is a very interesting uh, task. So and even more in future we will extend that for urban scenes so outdoor sound propagation will be extended and this sets special uh, challenges also for uh, the number of sources we, we have to deal with, uh, the moving sources and uh, all the, the time variant uh, properties in these scenes and uh, the path generation or the reflection and diffraction path generation is, is also a very uh, high challenge in, in large scale environments. So this is more like an introduction. Now the history. So as I said, we started in 1885-89 with my own PhD uh, under the supervision of Heinrich Puthoff and the first version of our software was uh, called Ray, it was uh, Pascal um, software and uh, what was started at that time is the hybrid method which can take the advantage of image sources and ray tracing into one model. Uh, so geometrical acoustics is what we do but we combine uh, several uh, let's say dialects of geometrical acoustics in this way. So in the 90s it was continued by Renato Heinz and Eckhard Mommertz. Uh, in the end when I became professor in, in that institute in 1996, uh, so we hired Oliver Schmitz who converted all the Pascal code to C and uh, also extended by, by Eckhart and Renate with the diffuse rain component for, for uh, uh, clever uh, scattering uh, or treatment of scattering um, sound. And then from that time we were in, in C and the, the software was renamed Caesar. Um, when Oliver finished in 2001, we had a spin-off of the software code uh, into Aura, which is a component in the commercial uh, package ease. And uh, so I do this quickly in order not to lose too much time. So we had another group of uh, PhD students. Oh, by the way, these were all PhD students, no postdoc. So this is one PhD project uh, after the other. Tobias Lenz took over, still kept Caesar, but with Dirk, 
uh, in the period 2005-2011, we, we integrated new aspects and the software was renamed Raven at that time, which is still today our, uh, our software for the room acoustics part. And he introduced uh, space partitioning techniques such as binary space partitioning or voxel techniques in order to speed up the, the polygon uh, processing. So when, when the ray or another path hits a polygon, and that's the main, main issue in geometrical acoustics anyway. And he and Zönke uh, continued with Raven and uh, later they founded uh, as a spin-off an own company, Audioborn, which was in the software Raven went into oratorium as another spin-off into commercial use. Uh, this went another way afterwards, but uh, at that time it was uh, quite nice to see also where, where it went for, for application in, in commercial software. So, but nevertheless, we in the Institute continued with Frank, Lucas and Jonas and Imran still today with Raven as the, the engine for calculating large scale indoor or outdoor environment uh, path, propagation path, which gives us in the end impulse responses. And at that time, Frank joined the lab in 2012, uh, coming from computer science. And he started actually a new project, which is virtualacoustics.org. So this is the software which I will concentrate on, on in the next five minutes. So VA, you will also, you can use that link if you like and get more information about that there. So that's a C++ library for real-time processing of uh, um, of audio uh, examples, so including uh, source information, listener information as concerns spatial aspects or so head related transfer functions and all that stuff. And uh, a very important low, lat no, low latency convolution of impulse responses with uh, sounds. So that was a completely new structure. In this case, we have two software environments, which we still have today. So Raven is calculating the impulse responses, but uh, VA is uh, processing that at the end into 3D sounds. So that's still going on with Lucas, uh, who will be hired as permanent staff. So here you see the continuation from that we, from all these PhD students, we will involve one of them as permanent staff for the future. And uh, still doing research is Jonas and Imran, but I don't go into more details now. So I, I think this was successful and not that difficult because in Germany we have a special situation at universities that we don't hire PhD students from one scholarship to the next, but we offer them a research job contract. So actually they work for the, for the university, they work for the institute. The PhD is something which is uh, possible but not obligatory. And not mandatory, but uh, all, everybody uses this, uh, of course. But in this way, we can hire also with overlap uh, based on, on funding, which we get, of course. But we have also um, some, some base funding in the Institute, so we can hire them with overlap in order to, uh, to um, yeah, transfer the, the software and the code from one person to the next one. So this is, this is basically the key. Uh, um, the key to the uh, continuation of, of this project. So this very quickly, just some insight of what, what's going on. So we have the two softwares, VA and Raven. So they are shown with a, with a blue, um, with this blue uh, line, I, I show what Raven does and, and the red is VA. So at first in, in uh, Raven, the best of Raven is the spatial processing for the ray tracing part. So we can deal with uh, directional reverberation, for example, or any kind of directional sound, uh, which is non-diffuse, also for the later uh, decays. So we are not restricted to any assumption of a uh, mixing time and then switching to some diffuse field assumption. That's, that's not at all required. And this we do it with some tricks with um, inventing fine structures by creating statistical pulses with the correct direction where they come from, just from this uh, probability, which we get as an estimate from the ray tracing. And with this, we create synthetic uh, sounds uh, in the later reverb, which, are, uh, which do include the frequency and spa spatial dependence. So this is how this would look like. The image source part uh, is serving for, for, the, for, the, for the beginning of the impulse response, but also at, at the time zero, more or less, scattering starts, which is then estimated from the ray tracing. 
So VA is doing all the other things. So the position management, the tracking, uh, visualization, not really, but uh, this is all part of the VA, uh, of the VR, uh, virtual reality application. And the main core of VA is the processing, filter processing with a low latency convolution. And also sending the sounds to uh, standardized uh, hardware interfaces such as the uh, ASIO, um, audio uh, sound input output st standard format or jack uh, or other formats so that's that's well and that can be very open for uh, ambisonics for fine oral technology with headphones or with loudspeakers okay so um, uh, that's that's my my um, yeah my research which i did uh, together with uh, with jonas who helped me a little bit on what we have yeah what we can transfer its information as uh, um, uh, concerning the experience. So the structure is just a core library which we invented to serve as a or to be used by our own master students and bachelor students so that we have a common platform where they can get all the, the code uh, and after some, some uh, time of uh, uh, let's say two or three weeks they are quite familiar with that and they can they can apply that for their running projects. So this is, um, contains scene handling, which means uh, source and receiver geometry and also the, the other trajectories possibly for moving sources and uh, the patching of the audio stream depending on the hardware and all the controls of that. So this concept can be also adapted to game engines such as Unity and Unreal and other environments, uh, of course, MATLAB and Python is still uh, very important also in the university, university environment, of course. So um, I don't know, uh, uh, John. Do we do we share the slides afterwards, or how do we do that? Uh, yes, that would be that would be very uh, helpful if you if you so have I, to. if you like, I can create a PDF, and so I don't need to read everything. So please <laughs> read yes, everything. please. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Okay, so I don't go through, through all these points. So why did we start this? We needed that uh, for. Uh, for our own virtual reality uh, projects, uh, basically for the students. It's not intended for, for being used for, as a product for, for the whole world, so to say. So, but anybody, everybody is welcome to, to join. But uh, we keep it in-house, we keep it in the institute and uh, just uh, use our own progress in implementing changes. So um, that's, that was the reason, so we need that for our students because um, they, they use all the trans-aura system or the CAVE system and they need to have a quick uh, introductory course into that. So it was created by Frank uh, in 2014, around that. And uh, the success is that uh, we can use that in-house and with some partners and still uh, the FAQs are sufficient not to be overloaded from, from questions from outside. Actually, we don't have a hotline and we don't have a service. So, and that's also very important that uh, for university environments, uh, as in our case, we, we cannot be overwhelmed with such kind of uh, requests. So unfortunately, the number of citations is unknown. Usually it's mentioned with a link to the, web, to the website. So we cannot scan all the publications in the world for, for that. But the estimate for downloads per month is about two to three. So this is still growing numbers of users. And um, uh, some of them, just one or two requests or emails per month come in. So that's quite okay. But uh, uh, the user questions mostly died out after the launch of the website and after having installed the, the FAQ part. So uh, that's it. What did work well, I should mention this as well. So uh, the modular concept was introduced too late. That should have been done in the beginning. Some parts of the rendering modules were copied and, uh, and later in implemented uh, with other functionalities. So it would be easier to have the modules more separated in the beginning. And uh, we, had, uh, we have a lot of dependencies to third-party libraries, which requires permanent maintenance. So which we have, so the possibility we have, because we have overlapping responsibilities in the, in the PhD student uh, uh, group, but uh, that's kind of tedious to have all these upgrades uh, in place at the right time. 
And uh, yeah, this is uh, what they told me, just the, the experience or the re response from, from the last month was that implementation specifics could have been implemented more efficiently. So that, uh, so someone must take the, the yeah, the, the job maybe, maybe next year to, to clean that up a little bit. So for, so for people who like to start similar projects, um, it requires a lot of development, but uh, I mean, the other authors uh, just uh, in this morning session uh, have the same experience. So it makes only sense in a long-term project and which we could do because of the overlapping, overlapping PhD projects. Um, um, if VA is not, if you don't need that, so the, just a broad applicability, if you have specific applications for virtual reality environments, then specific implementations might be better. And uh, particularly if you have uh, particular hardware, which does not work with, with our software. So uh, I said this already. Yeah, it's, uh, we also were, we were very happy in finding good MSc students, so master project students, which have a good perspective to continue. So this way we had even more overlap. And um, so with the licenses, that's my last comment maybe, um, better settle that as early as possible for the right license. And because we had to do some changes uh, afterwards. So yeah, we had some, some work to be done twice. Okay, that's, uh, that's basically all. Here are some other references if you like, but if we share the, the slides, we, you can do that later. So it was a good, good decision to decide for continuity. And uh, we were lucky in that and also successful. We had good people at the right time and we will continue with the continuity with uh, having uh, one of the postdocs being one of the main developers and he is just hired next month to have a permanent position at the, at the Institute. So that's, that's our perspective because um, I, I have some five years to go before being retired, but um, in the Institute, we will have uh, longer, long-term projects even lasting longer than up to 10 years or so. So it's, it's well possible that they continue with that even after my retirement. 